Well, hello, good evening, and welcome to VaporTrails.tv. My name's David Dawn, and tonight I am joined by, I was gonna say the usual suspects, but what I'll do, I'll go from left to right. That's your left to right, not my left to right, because it would be my right to left. It's gonna be an interesting show tonight, and helping me do this interesting show tonight, we have, in her usual position, the effervescent loveliness, the bountiful bubbliness. I'm trying to find another one to put a third one together. I'm just going to say the last I can do without on this show, and that just sums it all up. The beautiness, that is Sav. Good evening to you, Sav. How are you doing? Good evening. I am absolutely fine. Good. Like the weather. Mm. Which is... No. It's, it's amazing. We've had summer two days in a row. Well, apparently there was, there was somebody, uh, I think, phoned into one of the radio shows to say, today to say that they'd had three days in York without rain, and he wanted wow. to know whether he should wash his cart a day before the horse pipe band comes in. <laughs> yeah, good point. That. Does make you wonder a little bit. Mm -hmm. Next next along, slightly up and, and, and like over there, he said, pointing round the, the, yes. We've got John Spring from Ecker. John, how are you doing? I'm good, yes. Yeah, pleased to be here again. Yes, what's the Although weather? Although it's slightly upset that once again I'm shoved off to one side and you've given Laurie in front and centre. Well, I thought we could put the rose between the two thorns, you see, but then ah, you are no, you no, are no you, you are then also the ham in the female sandwich, and it's me <laughs> that's out on my own, you see. <laughs> so that's absolutely fine. And yes, as, as John's just pointed out, in in the 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 virtual window, we have Lorian from all the way down on the south coast, where apparently it's lovely and warm down there, is it? It's amazing. It's been glorious for days now. See, she's just rubbing it in. She's just rubbing it in. Sorry. Um, and we're here tonight to discuss the goings-on that have been going on with e-cigs over the last week or two, but mostly today, it has to be said, although there's one or two other little bits and bobs. And if you've been watching Twitter and you've been watching Facebook and all of the other places where we post what we're doing, you might have seen something about Glennis. And you'll find out all about what that is after the titles, because this is VT Talk. And we are back in the room. Yes, did you see what I did there? Forgot to play the sponsorship message right at the top of the show, so I played it in just before the titles. As you do, it's slick, it's seamless. You'd never know if I hadn't told you. Um, right, shall we get on with the show proper, shall we? I've got a little bit of housekeeping to do before we actually go into things. Now, you might recall, it was about three weeks ago, Sav? Mm. During the course of VT Talk, we happened to mention the idea of a German version of VT Talk, and a French version, and a Spanish version, and a Greek version, and so on and so on and so forth. And everybody agreed this was a great idea. Well, it's gonna start next week. It's gonna start next Tuesday at 9.45 UK time. That would be 10.45 German time, in the usual place. Um, and it's gonna be hosted by Mark Hamburg and Thomas Beer. And I'm here to tell you that we had a couple of rehearsals last night and Monday night, didn't we, Sav? We did. And it all went very well. <laughs> I haven't got a clue what they were saying. I heard my name mentioned. I heard Vapor Trails TV mentioned. And I heard other names that I recognise, McCavan being one of them, mentioned. But I think it's going to be cracking. And it's all in German, the full German version of ET Talk, a 30-minute <coughs> show. Um, so if you know any native German speakers or if you if you're watching in now from Germany, be there. Quarter to ten our time next Tuesday night after Mark Rose um show. Um there'll be a fifteen minute gap between the two shows, so we've got time for you know people to get out of seats and get into seats and change their languages and stuff like that. And the German version of VT Talk will be on. So if you speak German at all, come along, 
join in, say what's going on, uh, and you'll be pleased to hear my ugly mug will be nowhere near it, which is exactly the way it should be. So that's that little bit of housekeeping. Um, right, let's let's get into the happenings of today. Now, I know for a certain fact that Lorian was up at the Cracker Sparrow Fart this morning because she was tweeting about Nice and The Guardian and The Mail uh, all day from, what time was it? About seven o'clock you tweeted first, Lorian? Uh, was it? Was it that early? I've, time has no meaning in my house with small people. Um, it was early, though. Yes, I, I would imagine it was, yes. But now, this it was also covered by the mail. But and this, and this is where I'm going to throw it to Sav, because it all went a little bit kind of weird, didn't it? What was the headline first thing this morning, Sav? At two o'clock this morning, the headline on the mail site said, e-cigs are the safer option. New guidelines urge doctors to advise products for smokers. Which was, that was pretty much what I read. And I read that, and this is horrible, at about quarter past seven this morning. Did you see that, John? I, I did, and I, I'm glad you, you've uh, brought it up because I was going to mention uh, exactly what you're about to. Oh, well, there you go. So you, you read the same as I read this morning. And did you, did you, did you get the impression that e-cigs were double thumbs up and everybody ought to be using them and that was what the mail was saying. I, I thought we are in for a good day. Well, well, me too, me too, I've got to say it. Now, did you see that version of it as well, Lorian? That's exactly the original version that I saw, yeah. Right, and of course it all changed and I'm gonna to go to Sav, because you've been following this, but you've, you've also, I think, got the original headlines on our Facebook page, have you not? Yeah, I've got the original on the Facebook page. Cooly, cooly. So we'll be able to have a look at that. Well, I'm going to go to the mail now. And you'll see that Lorian is, is uh, kind of hiding in the corner there because unfortunately, well, or fortunately, actually, that's the way Skype works. So if we, if we go across to Daily Mail, and this is the headline, whoops, that it says now. Cut down if you can't quit. Doctors concede that some smokers just can't stop and that gum and patches are a safe alternative. Sav, can you read out again what the headline was this morning, please? The headline this morning was, E-cigs are the safer option. New guidelines urge doctors to advise products for smokers. Right, so if we carry on through this, as you'll see, National Institute of Health and Care Excellence issued the landmark advice, said those who find it difficult to quit can reap benefits if they cut down. NICE also recommend use of nicotine replacement therapies such as chewing gum and patches to help reduce daily tobacco intake. Some experts also believe e-cigarettes could be a helpful therapy, although they were not included in the guidance. John, what do you make of that <coughs> change of heart from the mail during the course of the day? Well. I think that the, the, the press has been interested on in this um, all day, really. Um, so saw the mail one this morning saying uh, e-cigs are the safer option. I thought, fantastic. Yeah. And read a few, uh, I think it's been on uh, in the Telegraph, it's been on Sky, it's been Radio 4, had a slot on it as well. Mm. Um, everyone talking about just how good e-cigs are. Uh, but that's despite what guidance actually says. Which I, I found fascinating that the, the papers are, are well behind e-cigs, albeit they want them regulated stuff. But uh, the change of heart, I don't know. Somebody's somebody's said something somewhere. I get that impression. I do get the impression that somebody somewhere has <laughs> been ringing editors up all around Fleet Street and wherever it is they do these things, going, eh, excuse me. I mean, what, what's your take on it, Lorian? Do you, do you do you think there's been some shenanigans going on? It's a bit, to be honest, it's a bit difficult not to get all conspiracy theory about it. Um, it is hell of a weird that on this morning we saw the headline, then we read the report and we all said the same thing. The headlines and the reports do not say the same thing. All of a sudden the Daily Mail and Sky are putting a real positive slant on things, which was quite out of character. Um, and then, of course, it changed. And it is it's hard to understand how they got to those headlines from the regulations, from the um, guidance. Yeah, absolutely right. I wish, I honestly wish I'd taken the time to take a screenshot of the whole thing or saved the page off so that I could have loaded it up and showed kind of the before and after. And it's it's really quite weird that this has been going on. But 
we, we probably need to have a look at what the guidelines actually say. But there's one word I think Lorian will have taken out of this because you definitely tweeted about it. And what would that word be, Lorian? Oh, would that be licensed? Licensed. Mm. Licensed. Everywhere you look throughout the whole of this thing, wherever it's talking about nicotine containing products, it uses the phrase licensed nicotine containing products, which is just. Yes. Uh, what was it you tweeted that uh, if you saw that word licensed one more time, you would vomit? Something along those lines, yeah. Yes, indeed. Sav, I'm going to throw it across to you and chat because I'm sure they'll be having something to say and I'd love to know what it is. Yeah, chat have had an awful lot to say asking why change things. Has pressure been applied by someone? If so, who? Um, Rat Finks was saying there was a similar article in the Times but saying e cigs could be a great alternative when they are made safely. And Leanna Lawless has said it went from e cigs being good to NRT being good. Absolutely, exactly right. That's exactly exactly what I've been seeing going on during the course of the day as well. And it, it I, I just I don't know why I can't understand what on earth they've been doing with all of this. Why there's been so much of a change? Where the pressure has come from? But we do have our thoughts on all of this because it would seem. Well, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it another way, John. What what? Having read the whole thing. And, and, and looking at the, the nice guidelines and we'll drop in and out of them uh, after you've had your say. Are you thinking that there might be something coming? How do you read it? Um, it but it, how would I describe it? I, I would sum it up. I mean, in, in short term, the nice guidance that's just been published today changes absolutely nothing. Uh, GP still can't uh, promote E6. Um, exactly the same as yesterday. Uh, what has changed, uh, and you touched on it already, is this, this use of the word licensed and nicotine containing products. We are no longer e cig users, we are users of unlicensed nicotine containing products. Um, change, of, change of language, change of framework, and uh, what this does do is uh, paves the way for the MHRA to come in and do whatever they like. Um, what, whatever happens in Brussels, whatever the MR, MHRA do, this nice guidance covers it. They've got all bases covered with us. Absolutely, absolutely. Do you do you think that this has been set up um, in, in any way to potentially make it easy for whatever it is that the MHRA comes up with? And I want to talk about that in the second half. Um, but do you think that, that, that NICE has put this together so that it dovetails with what the MHRA is likely to announce? And my, my info is that the announcement will be not this week, won't be earlier than next week, but it could well be next week. Because reading through all of this, where it's talking about licensed nicotine containing products and it talks about uh, if further information comes to light, then how was it worded that the... the um, the guidelines rapid need, review. Yes, need to be rapidly reviewed and we it, it kind of looks as though they've got the wording in place doesn't it that that it, perhaps it's going to dovetail in with what the mhra comes up with i mean it, it, it's straight the timing of it's strange just in that they've, they've announced uh and in the guidance it, it talks about well currently Yes, they've, they've introduced this new concept of nicotine containing products, but the only thing that actually exists in that bracket is uh, NRT at the moment. Um, and, and they've pointed out that MHRA are going to come up with their, their, their thoughts on this and whether e cigs should be regulated. Um, but given that that's coming so soon afterwards, it is strange that they've uh, decided to do this this way round. You know, I, I don't quite understand why they've come out with this, other than to, to pave the way for uh, the MHRA to come in, um, announce probably something very similar to uh, Amendment 1250 uh, as the way forward, uh, because it, this sets it all up nicely. It? It, it certainly does seem to. And let's let's just go on and have a look and see what the M, uh, I was going to say the MHRA there. It almost is, isn't it? Let's see what NICE considers harm reduction approaches are that are covered by the guidance. We'll cut to it there and it says, 
stopping smoking but using one or more licensed nicotine containing products as long as needed to prevent relapse. Cutting down prior to stopping smoking, and in brackets cutting down to quit, with the help of one or more licensed nicotine containing products. The products may be used as long as needed to prevent relapse and without using licensed nicotine containing products like Laurie and I think I'm going to vomit if I use this phrase much more but never mind. Smoking reduction with the help of one or more licensed nicotine containing products. The products may be used as long as needed to prevent relapse or without using licensed nicotine. Yes, temporary abstinence from smoking with the help of one or more licensed nicotine containing products without using oh God almighty. And it goes on and on and on. Whose health will benefit? Aimed at people who may not be able or do not want to stop smoking in one step, may want to stop smoking without necessarily giving up nicotine, may not be ready to stop smoking but want to reduce the amount they smoke. And these recommendations are particularly relevant to people who are highly dependent on nicotine in groups where smoking prevalence is higher than average. Examples include, oh, and this, I think this is shocking actually, but examples include people with mental illness, people from lower socioeconomic groups, and people from lesbian, gay, and bisexual, bisexual and transgendered groups. They are also relevant to people who are less likely to use services focusing on abrupt cessation. Now, I'm, I've, got to, I've got to come to that there, and, and I've got to say that phrase again. Examples include people with mental illness, people from lower socioeconomic groups, and people from lesbian, gay, and bisexual and transgendered groups. That's what it says. And I'm, I'm sorry to say this, but I think that that, frankly, is just wrong. For a very, very large value of just wrong. Because as far as I'm aware, the uh, LBGT, uh, why bring that into it? What, what has that got to do with anything at all? Any, any comment? Lorian? I don't know what you can. I, it struck me as very peculiar as well. I think that the, the idea um, that people who are emotionally and mentally vulnerable uh, have high smoking rates has been around for a long time and their treatment and the concern about their treatment has. But the whole, like say, lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, transgender, transsexual thing is a really odd, odd thing to bring into it. But, you know, if they're worried, I suppose... They're just trying to look after our interests. Yeah, but I mean, if, if, they're, if they're going to bring in the LBGT groups, why not bring in musicians? Why not bring in thespians as well as the lesbians? Mm. You know, pe people in, in, in the media, uh, notoriously heavy smokers. Geordies, if it comes to that, notoriously heavy smokies. Mackens, why, why bring the LBGT into it? What the hell has that got to do? I'm sorry, it, it just... Stuff like this really does make my blood boil because I can't see why they would need to do anything like that. Saf, I'm sure Chat's got something to say about all of this. Uh, Chat have got an awful lot to say and they agree with what you've just said with um, that's discrimination right there basically is what they've said. They are furious about that. Um, again, they agree many many comments about licensed is overused what do they mean by licensed um there's a lot of people saying follow the money <laughs> yeah uh vapor man saying the way forward is to leave things as they are sam monroe says regulated but not restricted winter rogue says can't believe they all think we would use unsafe products stupid idiots uh, Leanna Lawless says government will lose billions if people stop smoking. Um, Adam August says the whole affair with the EU is going to get nasty. Um, I've had a link which I still need to check so I'll get back to you on that one. Okay. Um, Lazy Vapor has said, Dave, a quick way to read that is just say give us your money. <laughs> and again, a lot with the discrimination. Yeah, I, 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 to be honest, I couldn't get me hat on with that. I just could not believe when I was reading that, I thought, "What? It, it, it beggars belief, it absolutely does. The whole thing with this licensed products, I think, I really do think that NICE knows what the MHRA is going to be doing. And the MHRA is going to be doing it this month. That is, that is for absolute certain. They are definitely going to be making an announcement this month. And to change NRT, which is what they've called it in everything else, nicotine replacement therapy, to change that nomenclature 
to licensed nicotine containing products, I think says an awful lot about what is going to be coming up. Um, and before my blood goes completely into overdrive and comes spurting out my ears, because it's a roundabout time that it's going to do that, we'll take some adverts, I'll try and cool down a bit, and then we'll look at what we think the MHRA is going to be doing. But that's after we share a little bit with you about Auntie Glennis, the lovely Auntie Glennis. So don't go anywhere, because this is going to amaze you. Weber and I Weber Alexa, best in Yorkshire for your AC needs. That's iweber.co.uk and iweber-alexa.co.uk. I Weber and I Weber-alexa.co.uk. Proud sponsors of webertrails.tv. And we are back in the room. Now, during, during the ad break, I know I've said this before and I'm gonna keep on saying it, we have got the best chat on the universe because Jeff Benyon, clever lad that he is, had taken a screenshot of the original page, had he not, Sav? Yeah. And what we've done, we've fired it across to Cat. Well, you, you tell everybody what we've done, Sav. Right, I've fired both articles over to Kat because I can't follow chat and read both of them at the same time and she's going to have a look through and see if we can find what is being changed because there's something subtle that's different about it but on quick glance I can't pick up what it is. So I'm going to get Super Sleuth Cat onto the case and see what we can come up with. And I'll tell, I'll tell you now, if there's any changes there, you know she'll pounce. She'll pounce. She'll absolutely pounce. So what was I? Oh yes, I know what I was going to cover. And, and I'm going to make you small again, Lorian, for this. I'm sorry, I've got to do it. It's the only way I know how to do this with the number of machines I've got to hand. But off we go to email, and then I shall share the screen. Now, an email flooded in, not to me, but to Andy Sutton. And I hope he doesn't mind me sharing this with everybody. And it came from Auntie Glennis. So I shall put it up on screen now, and I don't know whether you'll be able to see it, but I'll read it to you. And it says, thank you for your email about e-cigarettes. I have received many letters and emails from constituents who have told me how e-cigarettes have helped them to quit smoking and who are concerned that the proposals at EU level could result in a ban of these products. It might be worth underlining what's been said in Parliament so far. Nobody wants to ban e-cigarettes and that is certainly not my intention. But we do have a responsibility as legislators to ensure products are safe and quality controlled and deliver to users what they claim on the package. As you may be aware, the proposal on the table from the European Commission is for e-cigarettes to be regulated in the same way as nicotine-containing nicotine patches and gums. MEPs have yet to come to a view on how best to regulate e-cigarettes on the market and whether and how to amend the proposal from the European Commission. And this is where it gets interesting. My colleague Linda McCavan is the MEP leading this draft legislation through the European Parliament and she has taken evidence from e-cigarette companies as well as from users, regulators and doctors. 
The UK government's been looking at the issue for a number of years and gave evidence at a workshop in the European Parliament recently. The audio and video recordings, blah, blah, blah. After listening to all the different arguments, Linda tabled amendments proposing a lighter touch regulatory framework for e-cigarettes, which closes some of the current loopholes, such as manufacturing problems, quality control and ongoing monitoring of use, but which is not as strict as medicines regulation, meaning that companies would not have to test and prove their products in the same way. It would also mean that e-cigarettes could be sold as widely as cigarettes, creating a more level playing field with tobacco products. She leaves the option for e-cigs to be authorised as medicines as some companies and users may prefer this given the advantages in terms of a lower VAT rate and the possibility of e-cigarettes being available free to patients on prescription. In short, Linda wants to encourage the potential benefits that e-cigarettes offer regular smokers in terms of harm reduction, but these potential benefits need to be balanced against the need for more studies into long-term effects, as well as the risk that e-cigarettes could turn into a gateway product for children. There were newspaper reports in the past few weeks that a number of schools in England have already had to ban e-cigarettes from classrooms. E-cigarettes do contain nicotine, which is a highly addictive product. Product? And I am sure most people agree that we do not want a generation of young people recruited as addicts. We need minimum age limits on e-cigarette sales and regulation of advertising. These are still early days in the scrutiny process. Many colleagues from different political groups have also tabled amendments. And once these have been put to a vote, we will start negotiation with ministers from the 27 different EU countries. Only once MEPs and ministers have reached agreement will there be a new law. Thank you again for sharing your views with me. These will be taken on board in the ongoing discussions. discussions. <coughs> Best wishes, Glenis Wilmot. That's Auntie Glenis. That's who that is. John, what do you make of that? <laughs> what do I make of that? Well, it's, it's typical of many of the things we get from our blessed MEPs. Um, I, I can't believe she's managed to write something without mentioning the fact that she wants to ban them completely by uh, going down the medicines uh, route 100%, uh, no, uh, no get out at all. Um, and when she, when she talks about her colleague um, taking uh, stuff from industry, uh, uh, from users, etc. The, the only bit she's taken from uh, stuff that's been written to her by users and uh, the industry is, is punctuation. Yes, pretty much. I, 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 I've been quite taken aback by this. Lorian, what do you make of it? Because I, I, I need to get my facts straight on this. I need to get my head right on it. It, it, does it sound to you as though we're seeing a U-turn from Ms Wilmot? I don't know if it is saying it's a U-turn. It sounds to me like she doesn't even she doesn't even know that she's party to amendments that call for this to be completely med um, medicalised. I mean, to talk in, t in a whole letter about what Linda's doing, but not mention at any point that she's the one who's called for any nicotine-containing product, any nicotine-containing product, to um, only be available um, once it's been called a medicine, is really peculiar. It's like she's forgotten that ever happened, or maybe she wasn't involved with it in the first place. Again, we're back to very difficult not to get into conspiracy theories. Isn't it, isn't it just, Sav, I'm reasonably well convinced the chat will be here uh, voicing their opinion. What have they got to say on it? Uh, not a lot I can read out. <laughs> <laughs> Chat are very irate on a lot of things at the minute. All um, right. But Funny Trickster has said, quality control again, I haven't had any problems. Uh, Winter Rogue says, what a joke, so she thinks we're all stupid. Again, Funny Trickster says, no mention of tobacco confiscated in schools, that's been going on for decades. And Mitch Dog says, I don't think this lady's for turning. He didn't call her a lady, though, I had that. All right. I'm, I'm not going to ask what he did call her. Because I have the feeling it might rhyme with itch. <laughs> and you can stick any letters you like in front of that. I really do not know what to make of that email. If you, if you look at it, what she said is completely factual. That Linda McCavan is, is, has proposed these amendments and for these reasons. So from that point of view, that narrative is, is pretty much completely factual. A lot of the reasons that are in there aren't, but she's saying this is what Linda's done and this is why Linda's done, doing it. 
What she isn't saying in that email is whether or not she's going to agree with it. But I can't understand why anybody would bring up what these amendments are. And we're talking about Amendment 1250. I can't understand why she would bring that up without trying to imply that that is what she's going to be supporting. And I would, I, I, I want input on this. John, do, do you think that, that Mrs. Wilmot is going to be supporting Amendment 1250? Uh, well, it depends, it depends on whether Labour get to her or not. Uh, I mean, that, that email there really is just the standard Labour MEP party line. Um, uh, I'm sure everyone's got a response similar to it from uh, from their own MEPs, Labour MEPs, saying you know, that, uh, Linda's out there uh, trying to save the world for us um, and, and making things good by not proposing medicines regulations but uh, trying to make things better. Um, is she going to support it? Uh, I doubt it. So, <laughs> as you pointed out, she's got a, a ditch. A ditch? A ditch. You said any letter. Something like, yeah, well, zitch. Which is, it's an itchy zit, I suppose. Lorian, what, do you think that she's for turning? Do you, do you think that she's going to uh, actually go down the road of, of supporting what, what McCavan has proposed? Um, I don't imagine she is, no. I think John is exactly right. That's what I was just thinking. The chances are that is the standard letter that has been sent out by Labour. Um, but you would have thought that somebody, her, her aides, whatever, would have noticed that it has no place coming from her inbox. There's, it makes no sense for Glenys Wilmot to be sending that email, given the amendments that she has tabled. Um, so my feeling would not be that she's turning. Um, I think there's been a cock-up, in all probability. You know, I think you, you, you're quite probably right. I think a cock-up is, is, the, is the key word here. And I hadn't thought of it in those terms, I must admit, that, that, that yeah... The boilerplate's gone out. Her aid is sitting in wherever her aid is sitting, wherever the office is, whether it's in Yorkshire or in Brussels, and he's just put the party line out. But that in itself is interesting, isn't it? Because it, yes. what, it, what it basically means is that the Labour Party line is to go with Amendment 1250. Yeah. Which is interesting mm -hmm. in and of itself. I, again, I'm going to go to Sav because I want to know what chat's making of this because it's... It, it's come so far out of the blue, and I mean so far out of the blue, just weren't, well, I wasn't expecting the Labour lot to take that move at all, and I definitely wasn't expecting Glenys the Menace to take that particular move, but it'll be interesting if head office is saying that's what they've got to do. Sav, what, what, what's chat saying? Chat about the same. Mark Shaw says she's replied to Andy as if he didn't have a clue about what is going on. They think we're all thick and they can baffle us with something that rhymes with Botox. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Gillis has said it's not a case of mixed messages. Let the ASIC users think it will be fine while stitching them up in the background. Mm -hmm. Sam Monroe said protecting the children. We've got that through properly enforced age restriction. End of discussion. Get that working effectively and problem solved. And Ratfinks has said, protecting children, give them e-cigs in place of real cigs. <coughs> and I've got to say that that last one I can definitely go with. Um, I've, I've not got it on any of the systems tonight, but I went back to 2005, I think it was, and I managed to find a news piece um, where the MHRA and NICE between them had made it official that 12 year olds could not only get NRT on prescription but could buy it over the counter wherever it's available and it doesn't necessarily have to be at a pharmacy and I want to make given, it's been given out in schools Dave yeah I know it is but the, the, yeah. the, the, the idea behind giving it out in schools is that it's under supervision from a doctor isn't that the case? It, well, it depends how you describe the school nurse, I guess. But yeah. well, yes, there is that. There is that. Um, no, I mean, the, 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 the thing about this was, that what, what got to me about this was it didn't have to be under the supervision of a medical professional. A 12-year-old kid, male, female, whatever, could go to, I don't know, wherever sells them, Asda, Sainsbury's, Safeway, other big 
department stores or what do you what do you call the dumps? I never go there, so I forget what they're called. Superstores. Other big superstores exist. They could go there and buy patches, gum, one of those plastic tampons, lozenges, and they're all in these Bonnie flavours now. You can get them all in blueberry and, and what have you. And I notice that in, in the uh, the nice guidelines, they didn't say anything about flavours. But kids, apparently, it's perfectly legal, a 12-year-old, to go and buy licensed nicotine <laughs> products. I'm sorry, Lorian, to use the phrase again. But it's perfectly legal for them to do that. And it's been perfectly legal since 2005. Now, I'm just wondering, I've got this here, is Ms. Wilmot aware of this? that kids as young as 12 can go and buy these things. Do, does anybody know? Well, Lorian, what's your take on the whole thing? The fact that a 12 year old can go and buy blueberry flavored nicotine lozenges. Tell me what you think. It's quite an interesting one, weirdly. I was just thinking, I was in my head, I was drawing a comparison to Pro Plus tablets um, and remembering when I was at school that Pro Plus tablets was something that people would take because it was a stimulant. Mm -hmm. And what we've seen recently is constant reference to what a powerful stimulant nicotine is. So if a kiddie can go out and buy blueberry-flavoured gum that contains um, a very powerful stimulant, then... Surely, that I think I would have done. If I'm honest, if I was 13 years old, 14 years old, I probably would have done it. If you can buy a Pro Plus to get to the powerful stimulant effect, then you'll do it with um, flavoured, tasty chewing gum. I think it's probably quite appealing to kids whether they smoke or not. I think you're probably right. John, what's your take on it? Well, it's, it's not just a powerful stimulant. We have, we have to remember that we've been told it's fiercely addictive as well um, by, by the same bloke. Um, it, it, well, it's nonsense. It's a bad take on it. Um, it, you've got people who are out there telling us how dangerous uh, nicotine is, uh, at the same time allowing you know, kids to walk in and, and get it completely uh, off their own bat, uh, as long as they've got enough cash in their pocket to uh, pay the pharmacist. Well, indeed, one of the uh, one of the caveats in this article was that they didn't think there'd be too much uptake by kids because these things were so expensive, and in order to be able to use uh, licensed nicotine containing products. I keep saying that to see where the Lorian vomits. <laughs> <laughs> what, one of the reasons that, um, that they didn't think there'd be much uptake by these kids was because to use licensed nicotine containing products for a month was probably going to cost over £111. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I was down at a, a bricks and mortar uh, ASIC store yesterday and I saw that you could go and buy what I would call a half decent starter kit for 35 quid. And by the time you'd put um, some juices together, this is going to cost you around about 50 quid for the, the first outlay. So our 12 year old Johnny's got to go down to somewhere like this with 50 quid in his back pocket and expect to get a little bit of change. But he can go to Safeway or Sainsbury's, or Asda, or Tesco, or where the hell ever, with a tender in his pocket, and get himself a pack of licensed nicotine-containing products, perfectly legally, and he can go away, and he can chew the gum till it's coming out of his backside, he can pop the lozenges down his neck as quick as he likes, which could quite easily actually cause hospitalisation, or he could take all of the patches out of the little box and stick them in various different places on his body, and end up with a massive nicotine rush and hospitalisation. That they can do legally now, I cannot understand why they're not seeing that what we're talking about with e-cigs, unlicensed currently nicotine containing products, are probably a little bit safer because the barrier to entry is that much higher. And I'm, I'm hearing clattery bang, so I know Sav's got on the case here, and I know chat's on the case. I'm going to go to chat. Chat's <coughs> figuring largely tonight. Go for it, Sav. Yeah, chat have very, very much grabbed on the NRT for 12-year-olds. And Whip It Up um, 69 says, so NRT is okay for 12-year-olds, but no E6. To which Ratfinks has said, so if E6 do become classed as NRT, does that mean they'll be available for 12-year-olds, which makes a complete mockery of the sink of the children argument? And FMRL has brought up the dreaded licensed word again, saying so license basically means money going to the government and money going to big pharma. That's that's pretty much the case. Yes, I think if Glenis gets what she said was her own way, 
and makes them licensed nicotine containing products then 12 year olds all over Europe and certainly in the UK but all over Europe because remember it has to be a harmonized market and I can't see the MHRA and NICE having come up with all this guidance saying actually no we're not going to listen to Europe that's not what the UK does so yes if e-cigs become licensed nicotine containing products in the terms of the NICE guidance then your 13 year old child or grandchild or great grandchild for those that are old enough to have them not me I hasten to add could quite happily toddle off down to Tesco's and he won't get carded there's no age 25 or age 21 on them you've only got to be 12 so he can go down in his secondary school uniform and say can I have a nice pack of those Nicorette inhalators please and some lozenges alongside that's exactly what they'll be able to do if these things are medicinalized and I just wonder whether Ash, Cancer Research UK, Glenis Wilmot and all the rest of them I wonder if they realize that I just wonder and that I think is a good point to take the second set of adverts because none of the people who are going to be advertising in this next section will sell to anybody under the age of 18. We've got it right somebody somewhere is getting it wrong Right, so we're back in the room, back in the room. Welcome back to VT Talk with myself, Dave Dawn, Sav, John and Lorian. And, and we're talking ECs, we're talking the NICE guidelines, we're talking what's been in the papers. And that's a good point to throw it across to Sav because Kat has been on the case, I tell you. She's, she's, she's very good. So what's the result of that then, Sav? Right, Kat has scoured both of those articles from top to bottom and she says the only difference is they changed the headline from the dramatic one with the e-cigs are good to the not so dramatic no mention of e-cigs. Somebody's got at them. Somebody must have got at them to get them to change yep. that. So the quote from um, Robert West is still in there. He was on the panel to say that e-cigs are definitely safer to use <coughs> than, yeah, that's still in there. As far as I know, I mean, I don't know when the second one was taken. It could have changed from when I first saw it this morning because I'm still convinced it's not the same article I saw. Mm. But I know I read through um, the, the one that's current at the minute and it did seem watered down from what was said before. What, what's your recollection on it, Lorian? It, uh, I, so I read the two, the one first thing this morning and then this afternoon because it was John that pointed out to me that the title had changed mm -hmm. and my feeling was that something was different um, but it was, a, you know, when you kind of skim reading through something. So may, I may well have read it wrong um, and I think we all are given to a bit of paranoia. However, I think there was something different and the thing with that uh, West guy, yes, he did say that um, they're the best things in sliced bread in essence but he also said that as the price comes down, 
um, they will become more available to people, especially if they come under medical regulation because then they're not subject to tax. Now, I'm not sure if that's still in the latest version, but that was definitely in the one this morning, that they would be cheaper under medical regs. Yes, I remember reading that because they've, they've, no, it's not, not only there, but Glenis has been making the point that they'll be not subject to VAT. I'm coming to you, Sav. Go for it. <laughs> Before I forget, Kat's just said in both of the articles that she's just read, there is no West comment. There's not? No. Ah. She says they're both the same, but there is no West comments. So wherever, whenever the second one was taken was not from the very early original article. Ah, now I, right. In which case, yes, they've, they've, they've uh, altered it earlier than we thought. They seem to have alt been altering it on and off throughout the day. Because right at the very beginning, Robert West, it, it was quoted. I mean, the, 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 the thing was that these are the best things since sliced bread. They need to be promoted. If everybody took them up, it would be... Well, it was actually something along the lines that in five years, there'd be nobody smoking tobacco at all, was what he was saying. And there was also a quote in there from another one of the doctors that was on there that said he would be uh, telling all of his smoking patients that they should change to ACIGs. I don't know whether that's still in there as well. So I think a watered-down version of it is still in there, but not quite. It <coughs> doesn't have the same impact as it did when I first read it. Yeah. Is, is that ringing bells with you as well, Lorian? It is. It is ringing bells, which really says... I mean, I can understand they changed the title because factually the title was incorrect with what the guidance was saying. Mm. However, to remove um, people's comments from the original article that put a positive spin on e-cigs is very worrying that says something more than just someone going come on the title doesn't make much sense that's not what the regulate what the guidance says that says something else entirely absolutely right absolutely right I've, john I've, I've just had someone whispering in my ear in true tv style um <laughs> that uh, the, the hard copy of the mail has got this article in and it was the one that was online earlier with the comments from west in it oh right I shall have to... Now, I know somebody that reads the Daily Mail. He lives next door. He's called Keith. <laughs> so I'll, uh, I'll go and grab his copy of the mail. I will, we'll try and get it for tomorrow night so we can, we can compare and contrast the two. That's if there's time, because tomorrow night I'm making a mess of lots of things. Pardon me. I've just made a mess of that. That side of coming back to repeat. <laughs> I've forgotten where I was going to go. Sav, tell me what, what chat's doing while I try and remember what I was going to say. Oh, no, I've remembered. I've remembered. John, we were going to come to you, weren't we? Because you've... Um, the, the GP online piece? Yeah, well, it's, it's just interesting. I mean, obviously, the, the, the press um, and their response to this, as, as, as we've been talking about, being at odds with the guidance itself, um, and it's... Uh, interesting to read some of the uh, the news reports in the in the medical press, if you like. Uh, one of which was GP Online, who call it for exactly what it is. Um, and I can't remember exactly the headline, but it was something about um, I'm paraphrasing here for effect. But yeah, GPs told to blog as much NRT as they can um, with the, with the subheading. Um, got it written down somewhere. Yeah, lost a piece of paper there. Uh, GPs in England have been urged to prescribe NRT to smokers to lower their exposure to tobacco, even if they don't want to quit. That's that's how it was described in GP Online, and I think that's probably a damn sight closer than anything we've seen in the, uh, the mainstream. Yes, and, and having read through, and, and I'm here to tell you that this thing runs to 103 pages, this proper guidelines. It's a hell of a read, and dear God it is. I mean, it's so long-winded and it says the same thing about 43 times it just goes on and on and on but basically that's the, that's the, the the thrust of the matter is that anything's better than fags nrt is the preferred option because they have the feeling that if you use nrt you will decide almost by accident to quit i think i think that what they're doing is they're looking at what has happened historically with e-cigs because and i don't know about anybody else in the room i had no intention whatever of packing in i got e-cigs to get past the smoking ban that was the bottom line on it i didn't want to have to go outside and leave tens of thousands of pounds worth of very expensive gear to the the, the machinations of, of drunken rowdy gig goers 
and that was all I got them for. And it took a week for me to discover, actually, I prefer these things to fags. I preferred the taste. I preferred the effect. It was smoother. I found my voice was better. I was breathing better and so on and so forth. And I think, I think that they're ascribing these effects to NRT. They're hoping that NRT, or sorry, licensed nicotine products. She hasn't vomited yet. She hasn't vomited yet. We're close. We're getting there. I think they're hoping that, that, that NRT, the NRT versions of licensed nicotine containing products will have the same kind of effect as e-cigs. I'm here to tell them, and, I, I'm, and I'm gonna make no bones about it, there's not a hope in hell. When hell freezes over and my backside he heals over, that's the only time that NRT will have that same kind of effect. It just doesn't work that way. It's a failure looking for somewhere to happen. Um, but yes, GP online, get everybody on NRT. Actually, I would say they should be saying, get everybody on e-cigs. Not by prescription. Please don't be misled by this idea that you'll get them on prescription because what you'll get will be a looky lakey and it'll work like it just won't. It'll just be horrible. Um, Sav, let's, let's go to chat and see what they've been saying because I have the feeling they've been more voluble. I've been watching your eyes and they're going like this. They're flitting backwards and forwards. Chat have had an awful lot to say about NRT. Again, a lot of it I can't read out. But Gillis has said there was definitely a bloke from Nice on Five Live About and This Morning who was informing of the benefits of e cigs over smoking. Mm -hmm. Mark Shaw has said, could this possibly be because Big Pharma are trying to get their sales back up regarding the push on NRT? Mm -hmm. uh, FMRL has said, well, Pharma do seem to be behind an awful lot of this. And a comment that I got through from Kat, jumping back to the mail article, she said, all the comments that were prior to quarter past seven have been removed from the Daily Mail's website. Really? Mm. Wow. Ye gods and little fishes, that's wrong. That's censorship. That has yeah. got to be censorship. The Mail wouldn't do that off its own bat. They've written, and I mean, not, there's nothing in, in Leveson or anything like that that would make the, the mail do anything like that. Lorian, I'm looking at your face and I can see you aren't happy about that. Have a rant, me dear. Oh, uh, well, firstly, no. The, removing the comments, like you say, can be seen as nothing other than censorship. That is really worrying. Um, and in terms of uh, what GP Online is saying and what they're saying, what really bothers me is the language that's being used in all of this. This heavy push on NRT is going to mean, um, and if, assume that e-cigs get caught up in it, let's just pretend for a second that they are, um, the cost to the taxpayer and to the NHS is about to go through the roof because essentially they are saying repeatedly throughout the entire document, um, your first port of call when someone comes to see you is offer them um, offer them the reduction option um, and then talk about, if they don't want to do that, then talk about cold turkey. But your first port of call is to offer them patches or to offer them some other kind of licensed uh, NRT. <laughs> the cost, I said it. You didn't. <laughs> the cost to the NHS is going to be frightening. And thing is, that's going to be used against us. And it's been used against smokers for years, this what you cost the NHS. So now that if they do get these under medical regs and they can become NRT or NCPs, whatever, all of a sudden we also become massive drains on society and it's a way to demonise everybody who has anything to do with nicotine. It is, it is noticeable that there have been, certainly on the Twitter, an awful lot more of the tobacco controllers raising their heads and misdescribing nicotine as being, well, <coughs> as it was on the, on, on the, um, the, work, the BBC online show. Where the, what, how was it they described it, John? Powerful fiercely and... Fiercely addictive uh, and, pow and a powerful stimulant. Yes, a fiercely addictive and powerful stimulant, which not only Professor John Britton, but also uh, Dr. Jean-Francois Etter and um, an awful lot of others would more or less say, that's tosh. It's on a par with caffeine. And as somebody said, there are what is it 40 million plus people in the uk that are addicted to caffeine coffee drinkers i know you're not one of them lorian because you drink no, no. decaf <laughs> wimp um the 40 million plus people addicted to caffeine that drink it in coffee tea what whatever your, your favorite caffeine containing drink happens to be 
and nobody is bothered by that level of addiction and it is it's exactly the same sort of addiction as you would get from using clean nicotine because clean nicotine is nowhere near as addictive as as uh, smoke born nicotine and that I'm not just pulling that out of the top of my head that's been stated by all of the pharmaceutical companies that produce NRT or licensed nicotine containing products she still hasn't vomited <laughs> they will tell you that they've done the studies they've done the tests they've done all of the analyses and that NRT licensed nicotine containing products are not anywhere near as addictive as smoking tobacco which again begs the question where they get on about this, this gateway effect that kids are going to go and buy something that looks like that a, a little 401 or whatever they're going to use that and get so addicted to nicotine that they're going to want to smoke fags well hang on that's clean delivery of nicotine and in actual fact the um what do they call it the vipe or the Nicodex, whichever one British American Tobacco has very, very close to its marketing authorization, is based on a 401, for God's sake. That's what it is. It's an e-cig. And it delivers it exactly the same way. But suddenly, because it's now a licensed medical product, a licensed nicotine-containing product, a medicinal device, suddenly it's no longer a gateway product i'm sorry these people and i'm going to say this and you know me i don't swear they are talking out of their assholes sav do you think chat might agree chat probably do agree but i have to give apologies and amendment first because um the mirrors website i have all the comments still from earlier today but cat does not so we don't know if that's a problem with cats uh, cash page or my cash page so we need to keep chat calm and don't go and try and kill the daily mail um so yeah i just needed to add that but yes chat are exactly the same feelings that you've just said chat are up in arms right that's fine that's fine we need to do something about this we really 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 do need to do something about this now the mhra He's not announcing this week. I've had that confirmed. They, they do have a meeting tomorrow in London, but apparently that's not where the announcement's going to be made. It's going to be next week or the week after. So we've got time to get hold of MPs. And if you ring your MPs constituency office tomorrow, the majority of them hold their surgeries on a Friday. You've got a chance to get down there and talk to them and say, look, this isn't on. And you've, you've heard all the arguments put forward tonight. You've heard what NICE is suggesting. You've heard that um what BAT is coming up with and I I still have the feeling that the MHRA is waiting for that marketing authorization to be granted to the Nicodex or whatever it is that's coming through whatever's actually going to be it I think they're waiting for that would you agree with that John uh, yeah I, it, you've got to look at it as um the MHRA they're going to come out with an announcement and in all probability, they will, uh, alongside that, give marketing authorization to, to one of those two that you just mentioned. Um, they'll be, uh, therefore, available to be uh, recommended by your GP. Um, you know, anyone who switches to them will become a, a burden to society. Um, and, yeah, the, the, the slippery slope continues. Yes. I, I, John summed it up perfectly, reiterating what Lorian had to say. Um, we're, we're right right at the very end of our allotted time as per usual sav i'll throw it across to you because i like chat to have the last word sorry laurian but chat does get the last word they always get the last word with me so sav what they got to say i think the last word tonight's going to go to m vape uk and he said when we were kids we were told what we can and cannot do however once we became adults nothing changed <laughs> and he's exactly right i need to say a big thank you to sav uh, because your job's been hard tonight, I can well imagine. Big thank you to John for coming and joining us again, um, and to, uh, to Lorian as well. I like you two coming on. I like this panel. It's good. Um, I think it works extremely well. Thank you both for joining me again at short notice. This is great stuff. Um, we need to just one one thing, Dave. Just before I, I, I know you like chat around the last word, but just to uh, correct something I said earlier, it was Guardian, not the Mail, but uh, Robert West's comments on it. Guardian, was it? 
Yeah. Right. Okey doke. I think I saw it in the mail as well. I, I anyway, whichever way it goes, it's it's been an interesting show. If I've offended anybody with my language about people talking out their assholes, I couldn't give a toss because that's what they're doing. I'm sorry. I don't mean to offend anybody that's on our side, but I'll offend anybody that's not on our side because I find them offensive too. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what to do. Talk to your MPs, talk to your MEPs. Let's keep on fighting this battle. We cannot afford to lose it. I'm David Dawn. This is VT Talk. Thank you so much for watching. Peace on, vape on, vape hard. See you next time. Cheerio bye.